Hello and welcome. Today we're going to do a short detour to another domain in audio analytics and we're going to find out that it's actually not such a big detour after all. So let's dive right in. So audio analytics. In surveillance in general, audio analytics is not being used so much yet probably the most widely used application is really gunshot detection, where you can use audio signals, um, audio recordings to detect gunshots in real time and react to it, which is a pretty cool application. But other than that, we haven't seen so much, but it might be more in the future. So let's take a short look how audio analytics works. Now, audio analytics in general is a huge field. It's as big as computer vision. So it's a little bit hard to, to um, break it down into a very short video, but I'm going to give you a very high level overview. So if we want to detect something in audio, we have to look at what information is available. And if we look at a, um, at a typical audio signal, there are basically three components. First, we have the time period. How long does a signal last? So how long does a shotgun last? Then we have the amplitude, which is how loud it is essentially. So how loud does it get? So this is something we can analyze. And thirdly, we have the frequency, which is perceived by us as pitch but essentially is the how many waves you have in a certain time frame, like for example, per second. So these are the things we can take a look at if we want to train a deep learning or a machine learning model in order to detect specific things in an audio signal. So like with any deep learning project, first what you have to do is you have to select your data and your training data. So you do this, you prepare your data and so on. And next, as a next step, you have to select the features you want to train on. And based on the things that I uh, showed previously, you have to you, uh, you have to select your features, and there again, those are based. There are basically three types of features that are based on on the information available. First one are time domain features, which essentially is the, um, the, the, the uh, to plot the amplitude over time. So we have the loudness over time of a signal, and then we can analyze this. This is probably the most typical thing that we know. It basically shows a waveform. Then we have the frequency domain features, which, which plots the frequency. That's not so obvious. You have to transpose this into a, into a different dimension uh, with something, for example, like a Fourier transform. But it gives you more information than just the amplitude uh, over time. So it has, uh, it has the ability to detect more complex things. And finally, we have the combination of all of those. That's a time frequency domain features, where you com combine the time and the frequency for really more complex detections. So let's take a look. How does it look like? First, time domain features. These are typical waveforms that we know probably from somewhere else. Uh, on the left top, for example, we have dog barking. That's how a dog barking looks like. Right top, we have children playing with a car horn, air conditioner, some, something else. And then we have the gunshots. So as you can see here in, in this waveform, this time-based uh, feature domain, you see how a gunshot is very distinct. It goes very loud quickly and then goes down again. So comparing it to these other signals, it's quite easy to say, see that with this, we probably can detect a gunshot. So that's possible. Um, so time-based uh, time based domain, uh, domain features are pretty good for gunshot detection. But if we look at other uh, signals, so if you compare, for example, a check hammer here with a siren, uh, it's pretty similar. Or also, let's see, an air conditioner with children playing. Depending on how the specific case is, it might look very, very similar. So we need something more complex. So we go to this frequency domain features that I mentioned. Frequency domain is essentially you plot there the amplitude, so the loudness, with the frequency over here. But the big advantage, disadvantage of this is you lose the time components. So you don't know how long such a signal takes anymore, uh, which is basically a third domain. So this is kind of a problem for, for more complex things. And in order to do this, you combine these and you have the time frequency domain features where you have this plot. We have here on the left uh, a plot for snoring and on the, on the right a plot for toilet flushing. And while the waveforms are also different, you can really see the big difference in this in these plots here, um, where in order to detect these, you basically feed this into a convolutional neural network. And this is actually pretty cool. And this is where it makes the full circle again with audio analytics going back to our image or video domain. 
Because in fact, what you can do is you can use convolution neural networks, which are based on images, which are based on image detections with audio signals. And the way you do this is you create first a plot out of the audio signal. So you basically create an image and then train your convolutional neural network on this image in order to detect certain signals, something like snoring, for example, or toilet flushing. So basically it's actually pretty cool. You take audio and uh, take the three dimensions of audio in order to create a, a plot again and train your deep, deep uh, neural network. So this is the quick overview over audio analytics. As I said, it's so much bigger than this um, and it's kind of hard to break it down. But the point of all of this is it doesn't look, work so much differently than our computer vision methods. And it has more and more applications in the security industry. So that's definitely a space to look out for. And if you're next time you're uh, coming over applications like gunshot detection, I hope you have a better idea on approximately how this could work. See you next time.